This is my new favorite wet palette. It itself isn't that new. I knew about its existence for a while, and I even have the old version of it that made me fall in love with it in the first place. But this new and updated one has all the bells and whistles in all the right places. And they're not paying me to say that. I bought this myself. So I want to get this unboxed, let you know exactly why I think it's the best, how it's different to some others, and even mention ways I think this one can still improve. So this is the Despay Wet Palette. First I'll set this one up and kind of explain all its features. Like all wet palettes, it's going to start with a sponge. This one is your pretty standard charcoal black at about a quarter inch thickness, which is actually what I use for my make at home palettes. So it's not a premium sponge or anything, but what matters is that it soaks up water. Layer number two is this water conductive paper. Though it's more like a fabric than it is a paper. This is why the sponge doesn't matter too much as this is the surface the actual papers will be resting on. The job of this guiding paper is to soak up water from the sponge so that it's at a constant hydration and give a smooth surface to the actual palette papers. The last layer is the palette paper. This one is cut to size and there's two sides to it, a dull side and a shiny side. And we're gonna want the shiny side up. Usually I'll place it on the guiding paper and hold it down at the four corners to prevent curling until it settles on the surface then smooth it out from there. The reason I like this paper is because like parchment paper, the paint beads up on its surface, which keeps it in one spot. And lastly, we have some pallet wells. Five smaller wells and one larger one. They go right into this slot here at the top of the pallet, where it has a large opening to make sure it can also be pulled out of it. Right beside it here is also an open area just for refilling the water as it evaporates. The first palette display I actually did was this one, but it had a few features about it that I liked over others already. Firstly is its sponge system, but it also has this nice big reservoir for water here. Its sponge system is pretty much exactly the same as the new one. Large sponge, guiding paper, and then the palette paper. And here's why this method is a big deal to me. You see, I live in a very dry climate. Humidity tends to hover around way less than the desired 34% indoors. So a very thin sponge like this you find in most of the other wet palettes from popular brands on the market is a really nice surface to put the palette paper on, but dries out so fast for me. I only get about 20 minutes working time before I have to go adding more water back in, and it becomes a balancing act where I constantly have too little or too much water. With the thicker sponge and the guiding paper, what happens is we end up with this layer of buffer between the paper at the top and the water line, where the paper can use capillary action to draw up moisture, but never more than it needs. So it doesn't matter how full the sponge is, it'll always get the same level of hydration, provided the top of the water line isn't right up against the paper. The bonus with the display palette is that when it does come time to refill it, it has a dedicated spot to do so which also lets me monitor exactly where my water level is so I can top off when needed. Lots of other wet palettes also have bonus paint wells, of course, so there's nothing really special there, but there's an importance to and a difference to the location, location, location. With others, they tend to just add these parts as part of a bundle, but aren't actually part of the case which means there's no way to stop them from drying out between uses. But here's a little secret. If you cover paint, it stops it from drying out. So palettes like the Scale 75 one, this expansion for the Army Painter palette, and the insert for the AK palette can all be covered, thus allowing those paints in the wells to last longer. But in all of those cases, the wells are covered independently from the sponge and water. Meaning, if they're airtight, they only get to work with the moisture that's present in them at the time of closing. Not so for the display one. 
which gets enclosed with all the same moisture used for the sponge. So as I put the lid on, it creates a greenhouse, and that paint in those wells will actually stay wet for a much longer time. So you can stop painting to let a heavy wash dry and just put the lid on the palette. And when you come back, the stuff in the well will be just as wet as when you did that first layer. So it's not so much the fact that we got wells that's important as to why I like it, but the fact that they actually fit inside the tray instead of just being an outside attachment or a separate palette. Another huge difference is the color mixing papers. I personally like a nice plain old parchment paper because the paint tends to beat up on it and keep itself in a single spot. And Despay's papers keep that whole dynamic intact. That's why there's a shiny side to it so that it has that hydrophobic parchment-like properties. Other palette papers tend to let the paint spread out and that's not a bad thing. It lets you create and visualize blends between colors much more easily and pick from among the gradient. But like all of my issues, my low humidity means that paint being spread out gives it more surface area to dry out faster, even when it's got all that moisture coming in from underneath. And when you close the palette for a long time, who knows what kind of ink blot painting you're gonna get back when you open it up. Not everything is roses all the time, and while this is my new favorite, there are some places I can see having some improvement. For starters, air tightness. Lots of these other ones have elastics and gaskets to make sure the palette can be sealed to be airtight. Frankly, I don't care that much since I paint on my desk and don't move it much. But if you're someone that likes to travel with your wet palette and will constantly have it on its side, while it's full of water for some reason, then that is something to consider. Lastly, I feel like they could have shortened this groove a bit and got another well in there, which would have been nice. I've got big fingers, but not that big. But in reality, if we really wanted to improve all of these wet palettes, they could steal from the latest trend in painting and actually do purpose-made palette wells out of this stuff. Make them bigger and fit them in the palettes, and I'm sure us painters would go nuts for them. Easy to get the dried paint out and something to fidget with while waiting for washes to dry. Sounds good to me. I want to give a shout out to Maple Airbrush Supplies, which is where I got this palette in Canada. They're not sponsoring me, but I like to support local, so having somewhere close to get it was nice. I think Despay's official store is actually on AliExpress. So that's it. Those are all the reasons I can't wait to get to painting with this palette over my other ones. What about you? Which one is your favorite and what do you like about it? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. If you liked this video, give it a like and check out another video from my channel. Also find a link to my Patreon in the description. It's free to join and my store has both videos and STLs to further explore your painting journey.